Hi, George here. And in this video, I'll be showing how to use layer masks. And this is for absolute beginners, people who are brand new to Photoshop Elements, who really haven't done a whole lot before. And I'll show you just the basics on how to use layer masks. Now, to really use layer masks effectively, you need to have some experience on doing this. So a lot of my videos have layer masks included in them. I recommend doing several of those video projects and you get a much better handle on how to use layer masks. And this is one of the most important things to learn how to do if you want to do composite images where you're taking something from one picture and putting it into another picture. Now, at the end of this project, we're going to be ending up here. Where we'll take this couple and place them onto our new background and blend them in like that. Easy, straightforward process. The whole thing depends on doing a good layer mask. And that's what this video is all about. And I'm going to take my time in doing this real slow so you don't miss anything on how this is done. Also, if you want to learn how to use Photoshop Elements, the best way to learn is from my complete training course, where I go through all of the different tools, how each tool works with examples, all the different menus, everything inside the menus, all the different panels, everything you need to know about how to use the program, and then come back to my channel for a lot of practice projects. Okay, let's go ahead and step back to the original images and see how this is done. Now, I left off the step on opening up the image. You just go up here to the File menu, click on Open, and find your picture and open it up. I also have two pictures open. You see them down here in the photo bin. There's a photo bin. Here's our tool options and the photo bin. We'll be using this picture as our background picture, what I call my project picture or, or the project file. And we'll be placing this picture inside of the other one. Now to do this, several ways. I'll do it the easiest way, and that's just to go here to this image. Notice the blue outline here. You can see that this is the one that's selected. And then just grab this other image and drag it on top, just like that. You should then see two layers over here on the right-hand side, your background layer, that's the original one, and the second image sitting on top. Right here, you can show or hide that layer, so you can see, there we go. Now, what we need to do is to remove or hide the background on this image to show the other background in behind. That's where the layer mask comes in. We can get kind of a basic positioning on this if you want to. That's pretty easy. So I'll do a real simple layer mask just so you can get the idea. And I'll go over and I'll grab my lasso tools, come down here. I'll just use the regular lasso right here. Notice that this is the tool options. Whenever you pick any tool, the tool options panel shows up at the bottom down here. So I have the lasso by feathering at zero. And I'll just do this real fast lasso like this, just making a selection right around these figures. There we go, just around and back in again. And then just go over your initial starting point and we get a selection. Now that you have a selection, you can click on this button right there. This is the add layer mask button. Click on that and it makes that into a layer mask and it hides that whole background. And that works out pretty well. Now notice over here on the layer masks, we have a black layer mask with a white hole in it. And that shows you how layer masks work. Anything that's black is going to be hiding stuff. Anything that's white will be showing stuff. So anything on here is hidden by the layer mask or shown based upon it, whether it's white or black. And this is really all there is to layer masks. There are lots of little subtleties about this, different ways you can tweak this and do it and do it fancier. But this is the basic concept. Now once you have this hidden, your background hidden, you can actually take this layer and drag it around and put it anywhere you want. So I'll put them right over here someplace. And notice how the layer mask moves with the layer. A little link right here, they're linked together. If you use the Control T keyboard shortcut, that's holding down the Control key on your keypad and tapping the T key. This brings up the transform handles. I can then grab a corner here and drag that up and change the size of my image. And I think up around here looks pretty good. Something like that. Hit the OK button, that's that check mark. And there we go. Now, obviously we need to be in a lot tighter than this to do a good layer mask. And there are several ways of doing that. One is to use the polygonal lasso tool. That's our lasso tools again. That's this one down here. This is what I normally do. It takes time, but I like doing it this way. And right now I'm rolling in and out, zooming in and out with the scroll wheel on my mouse. If you have a scroll wheel, you can do this real easy. Go up here to the edit menu, come down to preferences and general. And this right here, zoom with scroll wheel. Make sure that's checked. Normally it's not checked. Let's go ahead and check that one. Choose OK. You can then use the scroll wheel on your mouse to zoom in and out. And the way you use this tool, and again, this is the one I like the most, is you choose a point, click on that point. You can then pull a line out and click on another point. Pull your line out again, click on another point. So the trick here is to come in and just put in points or dots and let Photoshop Elements put lines between those dots. If you are doing a long flat area, you can put your dots further apart like this. If you move into a bit of a curve, you put your dots closer together. Now let's come in just like that. 
and this gives you the best layer of mask that you can get. I'll hold down the space bar like that. You get the hand in here. You can then pull your image around and then continue on working. So if you want a really, really good layer mask, you know, the best you can get, then I recommend using this tool. There are other ways of doing this. You can use the select subject option, which works most of the time, but not always. And that's up in the select menu, but this always works. Now, the problem with this one is if you click too fast, it's going to close your selection and you'll have to either add in more selection to that or start over again. So make sure you take a moment, give it a beat between each time you click so you don't collapse that selection. And then just take your time and work around. And what we're doing is we're making a much more careful selection this time around this image. All this space bar down again, we'll move that down to here. And again, I'm just clicking on my points. You're just taking my time and putting in points and I'm letting Photoshop elements come in and connect those points with little short lines. And you can get real nice looking curves this way. Okay, down here we have some hair. With hair, you have to go out and around the hair a little bit. Don't try to do the exact hair, just stay in close. This is one of those areas where it's easy to click too fast. So make sure you slow down right here and you don't click too fast or you'll be doing this all over again. And that's just a real pain. We'll come back and fix this part with the refine edge tool. Back down to our shoulder here and back to our, just taking our time and doing a good selection. I'm gonna to try to keep these shadows in a little bit in here. Consider that part of the figures. We may have to fuzz things out right around the feet just for a real good effect, but we'll get that done. I'm ignoring those reflections, but the shadows I do wanna keep. Now our perspective is off on this. I think we'll just ignore that minor problem. This again is just a demonstration. I'm not really picking this as a perfect final image, just a demonstration. And that little bright red ring that pops up each time, that's each time I'm clicking the mouse. So you can see here I'm clicking the mouse and that's added in in editing. It's not something that's part of Photoshop Elements. So you're not gonna see that, but I've added that in just so it's easier to see each time I click my mouse on the image. And so I took some time around those fingers, just came in tight on those. Come back to the beginning point and click. That makes my basic selection. Now because I took so much time on doing this, I'm going to stop right now, go up to select, Come down to save selection, give it a name, I'll just call it figures, choose OK. It's now saved, I can get that back if I have to. So I now have a protection just in case. OK, hold the space bar down and it's come down here. I'm going to get this area inside. Notice that the cursor here has changed automatically over to the subtract option. You see that subtract option down there in the options panel. If it didn't change, then I would do that manually, just click on subtract. And you can see on the icon here, it's a little negative sign. That means it's going to be taking whatever I'm selecting out of what I've already selected. So I'll be subtracting this section from the current selection. And there we go. It takes that out. The exact same thing over here. Okay, that's now removed. I'll use the scroll wheel on the mouse to pull that back again. You can do that or use the control zero keyboard shortcut and that centers and goes full screen. So here we go now, we already have our layer mask. We can't make a new one, but there is a way to do this. If you right click on the layer mask, you get some layer mask options in here. I'm just going to delete this layer mask. That's now gone. And we'll use that same button again, new layer mask. Here's our new layer mask. And notice how they look much better now. They really fit into that scene. It's a little bit of a light blue up around the top of her hat up here. And of course we have that hair. Everything else I think is pretty nice. The more we zoom in, the worse it's gonna look. So I'm seeing a bit of blue along here and this hair. Now take care of this hair, we need to have that selection active and you can do that from an existing layer mask. Right click on the layer mask and come down to add mask to selection. And it gives you your selection again. And once again, I'll go up here, delete that layer mask and then come down here to the options where it says refine edge, click on that. Here's the refine edge dialog box, it gives you a little cursor here, little paintbrush. And you can leave all these things at their defaults. That's a good way to start. Click on decontaminate colors. That can help a little bit. We'll be outputting to a new layer with a layer mask. And then take this and then brush into the area that has those blue things showing just like that from the outside and just brush in a little bit. And what's happening here is that Photoshop Elements is going in and re-examining that edge and trying to make it as careful as possible. You do the same thing up here. We had some blue showing in that hat. 
Don't go very far in, just a little ways. This is a real gentle, real carefully controlled thing. We may need to do some fixing in here. Again, space bar, we can move our image around. And I think we're pretty good. I'm gonna come in here and do a little bit of this right along this shadow and see if we can help to blend that in a bit better. Right in there. This will actually soften down our edge. Then choose OK. Here's our new layer with a layer mask. Notice it hid that last one. I use Control Zero to zoom out. And that looks really nice. It's doing a very good job. There's a little bit of a halo showing around here. If we can fix that, I'll zoom in a little bit. Pull us down and up here, just a little bit of a lightness showing up here. It's technically correct, but I don't like it. I like that darker up there. Now there are a lot of ways of fixing that. You can go to the layer mask side and you take your paintbrush, make sure your foreground color is black. And I'll bring my brush size down again. That's the left square bracket key. And then if you brush black onto the layer mask, you can actually hide that bit, just paint that out. Just a little bit of a tweak like this. So you can come in and paint on your layer mask and then paint things out. Okay, let's just roll back out. Control zero to fit screen. We've used a layer mask to take these people out of their original picture and place them into this picture here. And I think it did a pretty good job. Again, you can get fancier. There are more tricks you can do, but this is the basics of how to do layer masks. Now, a nice thing about this also is that with a layer mask, I didn't erase anything in here. Nothing is lost. So I can fix that edge. I can paint black and hide. I can paint white and bring it back in again. I can also right click on the layer mask and disable. There's the original image, it's still here. Right click and enable. So we haven't lost anything on this, which makes it easy for us to go back and change or tweak things if we need to. Now, when you're at this point, if you want to print, just go up to the file, come down and hit print. You can print right from this file with the layers, no problem at all. If you want to save it out as a different kind of file, I recommend saving it twice. First, go up here to File, come down to Save, and save it someplace on your computer, doesn't matter where. I'll just call this one just Beach like that. It saves out as a Photoshop file. This is the Photoshop Elements file format, the PSD file format. Save that. That saves all of your layers. In case you want to come back and change things or fix things, you can do that because your layers are still here. Now, if you need this for the web, you want to have it in a JPEG or a PNG. I like PNG right now. Go up to File, come down to Save for Web, right here. I'll choose PNG24, that's for your full color. I'll leave everything else alone and choose Save. And I'll save to the same location and choose Save. If you want to really learn how to use Photoshop Elements, the best way to do that is a combination. One is to get my training course for Photoshop Elements. I'll put a link for that in the description. I have different versions of the training for different versions of Photoshop Elements, so just get the one for your version of Photoshop Elements and you're all set. And with that, I go through and I show you how to use every single tool, every single menu, all the different panels, how everything works in the program. And then for additional practice, come back here to my channel and do these different projects that I do here on my channel. And you'll learn how to use Photoshop Elements real fast that way. It really is the best way to do that. Also hit that like button if you enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe if you haven't already done so. And I'll see you next time.